it means, that, therefore, that all the money we are planning to spend on capital expenditure, we went to borrow it. To tell you how bad that is, you know, if you're a student in this room, like, you know, 90% of you guys are, it's the equivalent of your parents earning their salary every month, spending it all on themselves in parties, dinners, functions, fashion, travel. And then when you want to go to school, they go to GT Bank and borrow money to pay you. That's exactly what is happening. <laughs> and, and that's why we have some challenges with the way the budget is constructed. And really, we need to have the political muscle to change certain things in that budget. Um, if you look at some detail, they talk about revenue leakage, you know, quantity price shocks, leakages in terms of under remittance of federal government internally generated revenue. I mean, I was amazed at the fact that a lot of the buildings here have been built by direct labor. Um, that means you're probably building at a fraction of the cost of the average government contract to build project. But I'm, I'm also impressed that the quality of the buildings are no different from what I'm used to. In, if you go to the so-called buildings done by the likes of Julius Berger and, you know, PWC, PW. So the challenge is that quite a lot of buildings across the country can be built by direct labor and you do them at fractions of the cost that is going through. But obviously, direct labor doesn't lend itself very well to leakages because you basically have to go down to the lowest common denominator. So there's really areas of revenue leakages. Um, customs is a big place that needs to be looked into if you want to look at it. And many of the parastatals and agencies, you know, there's also this um, Steve on Ronson yeah, report has demonstrated that many, there are multiple agencies that are doing similar things that you could actually collapse together. When you look at the expenditure, um, one of the challenges of the budget was that the wage bill of the government has gone up astronomically. And see, it was, used to be something like 400 to 600 billion naira a year. And then suddenly between 2009 and 2010, it just hit the 1.6 trillion naira mark and has been trending upwards since then. This is one of the things that happened at the time when there was discussion in the National Assembly about removing the oil subsidy. But if you remove the oil subsidy, clearly there's more money that trickles down to the states. So, but in, as part of that discussion was going forward, people then said, oh, well, if there's more money, we need to increase the salaries of civil servants. Um, what ended up happening was we increased the salaries, but we ultimately did not remove the oil subsidy. And so we've now got locked into a very high wage structure, which, you know, is going to be difficult to unwind. And then coupled with incidents of um, ghost workers, or in some cases, that's what they call a living ghost worker. Yeah, I'll just uh, digress a bit. A living ghost worker is a worker that actually has, he's not there, but he has a bank account, and the money gets credited to his bank account every month. But it could have been someone that worked in the local government as a student, intern, you know, five years ago, has since graduated from college, moved to Lagos to work, but the system in the local government, wherever he worked, is still capturing him. So he has an arrangement with the people in the pay office to be paid, and he shares the loot with them every month. So we have this multiplied across many state governments and many parastatals, and it's, not, it's something that you can stop, but you need, obviously, to start tackling on that big evil called, let's start with a C. Uh, we will come to that later. So, um, so that's why you have this really d difficult position where, uh, the country spends three times as much on all the federal civil servants, ministries, departments, and agencies as it spends on the rest of the country. I think the number is something like 1% of the country is employed in the system. So about 1.7 million people spend three times the money that's not available for the remaining, um, if I take the remaining 168 million, effectively. Um, some of the challenges in the budget is that uh, in order to make the budget work, they've had to make some cuts in capital expenditure. 
There's a big amount that goes into defense and, and security. And of course, this includes a component of um, salaries, you know, recurrent as well as capital expenditure. But defense and security has been troubled um, until the last six weeks that we saw the federal government move. They had been spending about a trillion naira on defense and security since 2014, and we had zero effect. Um, so one wonders where all that money has been going to. There is about 94 billion reserve for works, power, transport, and aviation. Really quite a drop in the bucket, bucket relative to what we need. Um, there's been a lot of effort on stimulating job creation in agriculture and water resources. 39 billion there and 14 billion in water. And in the human development side, uh, which we think is very important, we only have 257 billion for health and 492 billion for education. Just to pause on this health, um, 257 billion works out to just about a billion dollars today at around 200 naira, so a billion dollars and uh, 1.25 billion dollars. Nigerians collectively, in terms of the recorded remittances, and these are people who apply to the CBN for foreign exchange, spent about $3 billion going for health checkups overseas. This excludes people who just bought their dollars from a, a malam on the street and boarded a plane and went and paid abroad because they did not apply officially for dollars. So the number could be much more than that. It just tells you um, that if we could trap all those dollars, we certainly could do much more in the health area. Um, the government plans to tr complement uh, ex capital expenditure by focusing on public-private partnerships. Um, but um, again, one of the things that was challenging with the government is that often they say some nice things, but when it comes to the action, they actually reverse it completely. And we've had many incidences of public-private partnerships that have come close to being approved, but never really got done. So if you look at the budget, the focus has been to, for the government to continue to push for growth while adjusting, adjusting in the environment of reduced oil prices, uh, to, and then also trying to diversify the economy. The focus still on power, on the ports, oil and gas sector, agriculture, manufacturing, investment policy, housing and insurance. In power, we're all aware of the privatization. First of all, the privatization or breakup of PHCN into the distribution companies, the generating companies, the transmission company, and those were all privatized in 2013. In 2014, we then attempted to sell 10 of the NIPP plants, the National Integrated Power Plants. Um, but we haven't really concluded that transaction because some of the documentation has not been signed. Again. It leads to the issues of PPP arrangements when the government doesn't really sign up to its own part of the contract. In the ports, there have been some efforts of reforming the ports. There have been some efforts of trying to modernize the airports, you know, Abuja, you know, Port Harcourt, uh, Lagos, and Kanu, um, and also some of the domestic airports, but not quite enough there. Oil and gas, everybody is aware of the PIB, Petroleum Industry Bill a big document that has been drifting around for three years. It certainly won't get signed by this government, but hopefully the APC might look at it uh, more candidly. And in agriculture, uh, the minister there has spent a lot, made a lot of effort in agriculture, but I do think that maybe some of that effort has been more directed at the media than actually getting to the substance of what is required uh, on ground. So, I end again with the funding gap, that when you have the government budget for 2015 at 4.357 trillion naira, the actual revenue is 3.6 trillion, and there was a deficit of 755 billion, which was borrowed. Now, if you ask them in Abuja, they say, oh, but our debt to GDP is really very low. We're not really borrowing relative to our GDP, but to be fair, our, GDP is, our economy is not robust enough that we should be borrowing that much again without really applying that money usefully. There's nothing wrong with borrowing. You know, we've, we've actually helped a lot of governments borrow money, but it's really applying those proceeds properly when you use it. So on that, I will kind of close the discussion 
on the economy as a, as a background to, to let people sort of understand the context in which you might want to evaluate the APC manifesto, because you need to sort of get a sense of how the economy works. And you know, when you're asking the question, we can then try and reconstruct it in terms of how the economy works. Now, looking at the APC manifesto, the change, the party which is to chart a new course for a better future, be bound in honor in the resolute search for a new brand of politics that is ideas driven and firmly anchored on the enduring principles of truth, honesty, service, justice, love of country, and more importantly, the pursuit of true democratic values. Very nice. You know, my, I'm almost crying in tears. <laughs> um, <laughs> Be committed to the primary purpose of good governance, which is the welfare of Nigerians, and shall strive to eliminate poverty and create job opportunities for all. This is sort of the, the template that encapsulates a lot of great ideas. But you look at the cardinal programs, war against corruption, number one. Food security, two. Accelerated power supply, three. Integrated transport network, free education and affordable health care, devolution of power, and accelerated economic, economic growth. All very noble objectives. Now we're trying to now see how we can fit them in the context of the revenue of the economy. Although I read on Sunday that the PDP has been alleged to have spent two trillion naira on their campaign. Now, if that two trillion naira was spent outside of the 3.6 trillion revenue number, then perhaps we might have had 5.6 trillion. But obviously that's been denied flatly. But we do know that this current government, one of their biggest challenges was the incidence of corruption and the fact that they didn't seem to want to do anything about it. And so the level of impunity with public officials taking money out of the system and actually flaunting it um, was just you know, crazy. When I think about the kinds of money that we need to make intervention for internally displaced persons in the Northeast and compare it to um, the frivolous expenditure you see in Abuja and Lagos. Um, I've actually seen people who drive in Rolls Royce in the Niger Del in River Rhine areas where the Rolls Royce is ferried across the waterway so it can arrive at a wedding. You wonder the excesses of the elite, you know. Um, so war against corruption is a very noble one. I think it's something that uh, will try to trap a, not, a lot of the revenue leakages. It can address this from two perspectives. Tr stop the leakages so that we can have more money retained in the system and also reduce the cost because there's leakages at the top from the money coming in from the oil proceeds, money coming in from customs, um, as well as the cost. When you look at the 1.8 trillion of recurrent expenditure, you ask yourself, should it really be 1.8 trillion or could it be 1 trillion? You know, do we have that many ghost workers in the system? Well, let's look at it in some detail. We aggregated the APC programs into three categories, short term, medium term, and long term. And this is an Afrinvest aggregation because we know that you have a lot of wonderful objectives, but you can't really do everything um, at the same time. So short term, reduce the cost of governance. Perhaps merge, strengthen, and make independent the EFCC, ICPC, other anti-graft agencies. Passage of the PIB in parts, maybe not as a whole. Free education, block the leakages in the oil and gas sector. And I think these are real programs that could be achieved quickly. I mean, this is our view, taking the, uh, the list of the things they've put together. Medium term, power supply, agriculture and food security, integrated transport network, attracting foreign direct investment, housing and healthcare. Um, long term, infrastructure development, industrialization, focusing on minerals and, and steel development. And that gives you a sense of some of the challenges they will face. But there are clearly things that you can win, which you can do with the limited resources you have. Several things in the short-term program. We certainly have enough capacity to muscle the Senate and the House to pass a bill. We certainly have enough intelligence in the country to know what makes sense to have in the bill. 
you know? So we can certainly pass that and hopefully unlock more revenue from the system. But when you want to build infrastructure, and I will show you in some of the slides, the numbers we are talking about are tens of times more than the total capital expenditure budget we have available. So it would really cost a lot more. So you need to think of creative ways to finance them. So if you look at the total capital need for infrastructure, this is an ADB report. Uh, the number suggests that we need $353 billion if we want to fix all the problems we see at once. So that would be something like $196 billion in transportation, $55 billion in power, $99 billion in water and sanitation, at least $3 billion in, in uh, ICT. And these are dollars. We're not talking Naira. So it's a lot of money, clearly. This would be... At the current rate we are going for 2015, you're looking at 112 times the budget. If we kept going at the current rate, which is spending about 1.2 trillion, uh, sorry, six, um, about $3 billion a year, it would take us 112 years to, to get to it. So it's, it's gonna be a long, long time. So we need to think of how to fund all of these things. So clearly, the new government will have to be creative uh, and work really hard 